Today, we're learning how to up your green screen game with a technique called light wrap in Fusion, and it only takes a few minutes. And if you're new to Fusion, I have a free workshop right here where we cover the only nine nodes that you really need to make so much stuff in Fusion. And that's my free gift to you. Let's get started. Here's the kind of effect you can expect. So here's our normal edges from our key and looks okay, but kind of looks cut out. And if we add the light wrap, that just helps that kind of sit in the scene a little more. So here's it off and here it is on. Just kind of put some ambient light around the edges. And this is a really easy thing to build inside of Fusion. We'll learn how to build our own and understand all the steps. And we can even save it as a macro so that you can just bring it up like this and it's super quick. So I'm gonna get rid of this and let's back up just a touch. So we're starting with some green screen footage and we're making sure we color manage it and everything like that. Then we're doing our key and I won't go over how to do that because this isn't a keying tutorial. Pretty much after we do our key, at some point we're gonna want to add light wrap. So first of all, what is light wrap? Well, it's essentially taking our background and blurring it and then compositing it over our keyed footage just kind of on the edges and doing that with a screen transfer mode, okay? So let's kind of build this ourselves. I'm actually gonna start with the transform node because my background is a little bit less resolution than my foreground is, which won't always be the case, it's just the case for me. And so we're going to take our background and just put it into a transform node. And just so we can see what's going on, let's just go ahead and just merge this over like this. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my background is sized right. So I'm just going to adjust that transform to make sure that our background is big enough to cover all of our foreground. Then we're going to blur it. So let's take this blur, put this after our transform. And a funny thing happens when you blur after a transform and then you transform it again later, which is kind of what we're doing. It limits the blur to the edges of the original footage. In the blur, if you go over here to clipping mode and you select none, that'll get rid of that and everything will be okay. So we're gonna take this blur and we're gonna push this blur size up a lot, like 70 or so, depending on the size and everything, but we're gonna push it up a lot. What we're really wanting is just the general color of the light. We don't really want to see details and something like this is gonna work just fine. And now if we were to take this merge and do something like in our apply mode, select screen, what would happen is we're taking all of this blur blurry light and we're putting it over our foreground and, and we're essentially kind of doing a glow. And so the background will look glowy and the foreground will have sort of this glowy texture over it. But we really only want this to happen on the edges of our foreground here. We don't want it to be throughout the whole thing. It's too much. It's unnecessary. It doesn't look realistic, right? So we want to limit it to the edges. We could certainly do something like add a polygon mask you know, and just mask kind of where the edges are like this, you know, and then feather this mask. And that would honestly, uh, that would work. And if you're doing just one frame, <laughs> that isn't animated, doesn't move, that might be faster than kind of setting this up. And it's gonna give you a similar result, at least on the foreground. But one problem is it's going to blur the background as well, and that's not really what we want. But the foreground part actually is kind of doing what we want. We're having this light kind of wrap around our foreground. And so, you know, conceptually, it's a good idea. But what we're really looking for is to both limit it to just the foreground, and we want this to be automated so we don't have to animate this mask, because that would be terrible. And yes, we could use magic mask, we could to do a bunch of stuff. Really the easiest thing to do is to use the key that we already have from our Delta keyer. So if I hit one on the keyboard, I can bring up just this Delta keyer. And when you make a green screen, you're making a mat for your foreground, right? And so if I hit A on the keyboard, we can see this mat. This black is transparent and white is opaque. And so the beauty of working in Fusion is that we can take something like this and we can modify it. We can do all kinds of fancy stuff to it. We can reuse it. We can invert it. We can do all kinds of stuff to get a selection that we want if we have a place to start out with like this mat right here. So one thing we could do is instead of this polygon mask, we could just plug this Delta keyer in to the mask input of our merge three right here. And we'll turn this back on. And now we have this blurry background merged over just our foreground. See if I turn this off and on, it's just on the foreground, which again is almost what we want because it's being limited to the alpha of our foreground and we're not touching our background anymore. The only problem is that it's all over the inside of this and we just want it on the edges. So how do we do that? Well, we can combine mats together to get a certain selection and a great tool for that is mat control. So here sort of in the middle of our toolbar, this little black and white icon is called mat control. You can bring this down. And mat control combines mats like this in various different ways. So I can take the Delta key here and plug this into our first input of our mat control and I'll hit one on the keyboard. And what we're doing is bringing this keyed image into this mat control node. But what we really want to pay attention to is the alpha channel. So I'll just mouse over here and hit A for alpha. And just to show you kind of what this does, I'll grab a ellipse 
Eclipse mask, and I'll just plug this into the green input of the matte control. By default, matte control doesn't do anything. You have to kind of play with the controls over here, but we're going to say combine alpha, and we're going to take this post multiply image and check that. What it's doing now is replacing this matte from the delta keyer, the alpha channel, with the alpha channel from our ellipse. So now we just have a circle. That's because this combine operation is copy. If we set it to something like add, we're going to have our original matte plus the circle, right? And so we can move this around, that kind of thing. And whatever we make with this matte control, we can take the output of this and put this into the mask input of our merge like this. And then we can control where this glow happens, right? Because I'm changing this alpha channel with the matte control, I'm adjusting the matte and it's using that alpha channel as a mask for our merge. So what if I select matte control and I go over here to combine operation and I switch that to subtract? Look what happens. Now I'm taking away a circle, right? And so in theory, if I had a mask here that was perfectly around the insides of our original matte, then I could kind of get happening what we want to get happening. I could even kind of mock this up like this, adjust this mask, soften it. And you see, we're sort of getting there. It's not on her face anymore. It's sort of wrapping around the edges of her hair without touching her face. And it's not touching the background, right? So now we just need a better version of this. And when I was saying earlier that we can take a mat like this and we can change it, we'll check this out. Instead of using this ellipse mask, let's just get rid of that. And let's grab a blur. Just grab a regular blur and we'll put this delta keyer into that blur and I'll hit one on the keyboard. We can take this blur and blur this up like this. And now we have a blurry alpha channel. We'll take this and combine that in the matte control into that green input. And now look what's happening. If I hit one on the keyboard, oh baby, there's the magic. All we're doing is blurring a copy of this. And because of that blur, it's doing exactly what we want. It's just making a soft inside matte that's being limited on the outside by our original key. But on the inside, it's taking away the blurry version of the same matte, which leaves this little edge. Again, this is happening because we have the blurry version in the green input of the matte control and the regular version in the yellow. And we're setting the matte control to subtract the green input from the yellow input. Again, if I had this set to add, we would actually have a blurry regular version of the matte, but because it's subtract, it's taking away the interior of it. And now look what we have. We have this awesome light wrap that works perfectly. So cool. And it moves with our subject because it's all based on our key. And so as long as we're making a good matte with our key, the light wrap is going to work just fine. Again, here it is without it and with it makes a big difference. And we can adjust kind of how this looks by adjusting the amount of blur. So we can take the blur down and make that a little more subtle. We could also adjust the blend in our merge here, turn that off and on. We can change to different apply modes, whatever we want to do to kind of dial this in. So that's really cool, but we don't want to build that every time, right? I mean, that's just a ton of work. And the great news is we don't really need to. We can make this into a macro, which is just kind of like a saved group of tools inside of Fusion. And it's pretty easy to do that. All we need to do is select all the nodes that we want to save, and we can save them in a certain way. But I am going to do one special thing before we do that. Instead of running this delta keyer into three things, I'm going to grab a merge node like this, and I'm going to just put it into the background of the merge and put the result of that merge into these three spaces. It's not going to change the result of this, but it's going to make things a little bit easier when we build our macro, okay? Because the delta key is only going into one place, just the yellow input of this merge. And so I'll just rename this input like that. And it's okay that we don't have a foreground here. It doesn't matter. It's just going to pass through this delta key here. And yeah, I'm just going to box select all of these nodes and then right click on any of them and go up to macro, create macro. This brings up our macro tool, which lets us save all of this stuff into a nice, neat little package that we can use as a single tool in Fusion. And all you do is just twirl down any of these nodes that you want to have access to. And then we check whatever properties we want to be able to change. So let's check this background. This is actually going to be the keyed image input. Okay. And I'll twirl up input because that's all we need. And we can look back at our nodes to remember what we need. We want to make sure that we can adjust the amount of blur. So under blur two, let's just say blur size. We could leave that at blur size, but let's just call a wrap amount. Okay. We also want transform three and let's publish the size. We'll just call this um, wrap image size. We'll also make sure that we have input ticked here and let's rename this uh, wrap image. That'll be the input for our wrap image. Blur one is going to be how much we blur our wrap image. So we'll just call this wrap image blur. 
And then merge three, we're gonna to want to publish a couple things here. One is the apply mode. We wanna be able to pick screen or multiply or whatever. And the other one is blend. So how strong we want this effect to be. That should be all that we really need to adjust. I'll call this light wrap two because I've made a couple of these just testing this out. And then go up to the three dots here and just hit save. By default, it's going to pop up with the macros directory for fusion. These are the ones that you can just get to with your tool selection menu. I'll just hit save. And now take all of this and hold shift and just drag this out, just drag it to the side. And now we're back to where we were just with our original image without the light wrap. I'll select Delta key here and just hit shift spacebar and type light wrap. And there's our light wrap two that we just made. I'll hit enter. And by default, it's going to connect to that keyed image. That's good. And now we just have to connect this wrap image, which is going to be our background. Connect that in. Bloop. There we go. There's our light wrap. And we have these convenient little sliders here to adjust what it looks like. So we can adjust the wrap amount, which again is just that blur on that mat. The wrap image size, which is that transform. So just in case you have a mismatched resolution of some kind, you can make sure that that's blurry enough. We can adjust the blur of our wrap image, how much we want to do that. And then of course the blend, how strong we want this to be. And our apply mode, if we want to turn this to lighten or color dodge or something like that, multiply, whatever we want to do. Normally you just leave it on screen and you can kind of dial it in to taste. So I think that's a pretty cool tool to be able to build yourself in Fusion. You don't even have to know that much. You just kind of have to understand how nodes connect together. And you can build your own tools like this. And so that's an easy way to make light wrap. That's a, a really nice tool that you can use on anything you want. And yeah, great technique. Here's a little note also, something that I didn't really see until later was that we have this kind of dark line on the edge here sometimes. And we can actually fix that just by adding an erode dilate. So I'll hit shift spacebar E-R-O-D-E. And I'll put that before the yellow input on our mat control. So that's just our original mat. And what a road dilate does is it will grow the mat bigger or shrink it down. And so we can take this and push it up just a little bit and it'll get rid of that dark line. You have to be kind of careful with this, but that's an easy fix. If you are getting that kind of dark line around your light wrap, you can kind of adjust that to where that looks a little nicer. So here's before and here's after just really kind of takes care of that in a much nicer way. My name is Casey and I teach people how to use Fusion. So make sure to get that free workshop, that nine nodes that you really need to make basically anything in Fusion. And you should also watch this video right here because it's, uh, it's a good one, okay? It's like perfect for you, right there.